Now, something you said to me only a couple of days ago that you wanted, you were desperate for. I think we all want this. Dare I say you were gagging? Yep. An entry from William's Diary. Hello and welcome to our weekend release. This is our bonus podcast where we can see how much extra content we can squeeze into your week. Random things that have been sent in, extra bits from the week, and how our advice went down with you, our and Divas. Now, something you said to me only a couple of days ago that you wanted, you were desperate for. I think we all want this. Dare I say you were gagging? Yep. An entry from William's Diary. Okay. We're going back to February 2015. Um, this involves our executive producer, Stuart. Wow. So we should just say <laughs> Executive Producer Stuart has now moved <laughs> into vision. <laughs> Actually, Stuart is fine in this. You have nothing to worry about. So I have my main diary, but then I also, and I only did about five, I started to write diaries about dinner parties. It's called the Dinner Party Diaries. And I only ever wrote about five. This is one of them. This is Stuart and I went to a mutual friend's dinner. I have changed names throughout this. I know whose dinner it is already. Here we go. Having entertained Fiona at Hanson Towers last year, she was a surprise vegan, although one that mercifully ate fish when dining out. I was heartened to receive an invitation to her own abode. Fiona lives in a really super house in Sale, an area of Greater Manchester some say it counts as Cheshire. I am not convinced. Although I had left the expected ten minutes in between the stated arrival time and my actual arrival, I found I was the last to arrive. Stuart was already there, as were the other guests. A couple, namely a BBC News correspondent, who I have called in this Rob, and his girlfriend Jane. Upon hearing the guest list the next day, my brother said what we were all thinking that evening but was too polite to say, I thought Rob were gay. Can you remember who that was? Yes. Fiona introduced me to her husband, who I only met once at a press night. Stuart and I had some confusion as to what the husband's name was. Stuart proffered the suggestion it was Tiggs. I text back asking if that was a joke. Apparently not. Helpfully, Stuart had found out upon his arrival ten minutes before me that it was actually Jack, but Tiggs is a nickname. We never discovered exactly why Jack has this exotic misnomer. I shall have to entertain them both another time to ask why. We gathered first in their sitting room. Remarkably up together, considering they had just been there four and a half months. I spotted immediately that it was Farrell and Ball paint on the walls, churlish green. How did you know it's Farrell and Ball? When you know, you know. I've got a sixth sense. <laughs> Fiona offered me a sherry, which I accepted. One would be fine, I said, seeing as I were driving. Fiona and Jack, slash Tiggs, are vegans, but thankfully serve vegetarian cuisine for their guests. The sort of vegans I can get along with. <laughs> the first course was a selection of Spanish tapas. You don't like vegetarians? No. The first course was a selection of Spanish tapas, with some delicious olive bread. I tried to resist, having shunned bread as part of my diet but had two slices. <laughs> the main I loved it. You need to get these published. I really don't. There's so much I've had to cut from this entry anyway. Oh, really? The main course was paella, thankfully free from shellfish. Paella? Yes. Instead, it had vegetarian sausage, which mercifully tasted all right, and several of us had several helpings. I would have taken a third, but that would have been gluttonous and beyond ghastly behaviour. Oh, I, I was more concerned... I was more concerned with not getting too drunk, as wine was now being poured for me. The concept of me driving back had clearly been forgotten by my generous hosts. The pudding was creme catalane, a Spanish version of creme brulee. Fiona did that classic English thing hosts always do when serving food and apologised for it before we had chance to tuck it. <laughs> Apparently she had left it in too long. I had never eaten creme catalane and loathed creme brulee, so didn't have much of a foundation upon which to pass true verdict. It was perfectly nice, however. Oh. Cheese and chocolates followed, served slowly due to Fiona's increasingly inebriated state. I usually detest drunks. Obviously, I'm a changed person. But Fiona is quite charming when she's been on the cooking sherry, or, as on this occasion, the cooking sherry, the cellar, and half the off-licence. <laughs> 
Sorry. You was 25 when you was right in there. 24. Her wayward state caused her to literally fall over the front door as she showed us out. <coughs> and that was my diary entry for Fiona's dinner party. I want to know what you've cut out. Oh, not that much. I didn't know you were friends with Fiona. Yes. I never knew. I, I always Not I... anymore. <laughs> not after she hears this. So there we go. Right, should we do uh, a couple of correspondence as well? Yes, let's move on before before. That was great. I love hearing them. I'm so glad. This one is from Michael. Good afternoon, William Jordan, and our our PB. He's our PB, not your PB. During lockdown, my family have discovered the wonders of cocktails. Let's be honest, there hasn't been a lot else to do. And one of the recipes called for Benedictine. Oh, here we go. I love, I'm love. i well into my cocktails now as well. Like any good g and I saw my opportunity and explained to them that the Burnley Miners Club is one of the largest consumers of Benedictine. It is, I bet you not. So despite my best efforts, I appear to have actually learnt something. What do you mean you appear to have learnt something from listening to the podcast? And from me as well, of all people. Very much looking forward to seeing you all on the Manchester stop of your tour, Michael. For those of you that don't know... Benedictine is a French liqueur that um, the troops in the First World War brought over from France, from the trenches to Burnley, and it's been a, a local drink ever since. The most Benedictine in the world is drunk in Burnley. and Because no one else likes it. We have it with hot water, so you have it Benedictine and boiling hot water, and it's a really Hence, nice drink. Benny and hot. Benny and hot. Or you can also have a Benny bomb. A Benny bomb? Instead of a Jaeger bomb, take the Jaeger out and stuff. So it's like Benedictine and Red Bull. I see. Right. Yeah. And um, it's it's a local. I, I tell you what, on turf in December, January, February, March, winter, um, <laughs> 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 it's the best drink. You go down at half time when you're getting beat 4 0 by City. You go down and have a Benny and out, and it just warms you up. Makes you go and watch second half. I think Benedictine is Ben's drag name. Ben's actual real name. We talked about this before. A lot of we people. have, yes. He's a Benedict. He's not a Benjamin. Yeah. I used to initially call him Benjamin, and he used to get very annoyed. Mm. It's Benedict. Does your mum call you Benedict? Or your dad? It's only me that calls you Benedict, really, isn't it? You know you're in my phone as Benedict. <laughs> Is he in your phone as Benedict? No. Something else. Just the dict. This next one, and stand by everyone because it's about four pages, is from High Class Trevor and Resigned Ward. Dear William and Jordan and dear, dear producer Ben. Don't build up his part. I'd like to start by thanking you most graciously for the advice that you so generously provided us when we last wrote. Your tip about spears, burritos and moose was ever so helpful. Trevor no longer tells Ward's horrid childhood tale to our dinner guests. Instead, we play the podcast and William does it for us. Oh, this is the guy. Mm. Oh, my God. This is the guy who his dad bent over and shat in his face. (laughs) Do you remember that? How can I forget? Oh, God, he's back in touch. Well, this time, (laughs) they say this time their last request was for Ward. This time it is for Trevor. We are currently reclined on our rooftop garden. <laughs> Innocent birds tittering at what lies before them. Surrounded by queenery, greenery and the most mesmerising scenery. <laughs> it's not easy to say after a few gin and bonnets. We are of course indulging in gin and bonnet, enjoying the caress of sun on our na- naked flesh. Perverts. But <laughs> trouble is brewing. You see, with international travel soon to take off once more... (laughs) I know where this is going. The temptation to rejoin the jet set can hardly be contained. And here, William's extensive experience with travel and luxury will be of the utmost importance. Because as our eyes take to the skies... Could you stop rhyming everything? (laughs) This is great! I can't help but be reminded of a terrible incident when our love was as young as a baby beaver. We were flying to Athens on our way to sun-drenched sun-drenched islands and luxury. Mm. Hands clasped together, we look forward to all the fun in which we would soon indulge and all the love that we would soon make. (laughs) 
But while Athens may be a quick jaunt for your British listeners, I must tell you it's quite a bit further from Canada, the west coast of Canada no less. To my stomach-churning dismay, I found that our in-flight meal was not agreeing with me. Are these Canadians? Correct. Are they gay? I think so. Oh, okay. Now fear not. I'm not about to tell some dreadful story of misadventures in the aeroplane's WC. However, the situation did apply some pressure to our plans. Between missing the loo in the airport, fighting May Day crowds, and our desire to explore Athens for the first time, I severely misjudged my bowels' fortitude. Is this Athens in Greece? Yes. As opposed to Athens in... Canada. I think um, Athen- there is an Athens in America, I think. Oh, OK. But not in Canada. By the time we arrived at our five-star hotel, my sweat-drenched clothing was hanging limply from my body and my coat had to be tied tightly around my waist, lest my dark, seeping embarrassment show through. I can only thank Her Majesty, the Queen Shakespeare, that I wasn't forced to go Macbeth on the staff and guests. Don't get that. Neither do I. I feel it important. Is that because he it weren't Macbeth really gory? And it was like splitting everywhere, blood and stuff. Maybe. It's what a C in English gets you. <laughs> what me or you? Me. Oh, I see. GCSE. Thank you. I got an A. I feel it important to note that despite having trousers full of chocolate mousse. Oh, for God's sake! Jesus. Wet. Apparently, that they were our words. We all. St- we were all still upgraded to the full-service executive wing of the hotel. High class always shines. Why do these people keep writing in about shit? So, with all that in mind, I most humbly request your advice. What is the etiquette at a top-end hotel to get my silk MS but frighteningly soiled underwear refreshed? Yours, high class Trevor. I doubt that. And resigned ward. I'm starting to think these two might be a bit... Why do they keep writing in about... It's, imagine going to their house and to eat and all they talk about is poo stories. Nobody wants to hear that. I don't think I would send such soiled underwear to laundry in a hotel. I think you've got to wash them out in sink first, at least. I know the hospitality industry has had a bad 16 months, but they don't need that. Wash them under tap in sink. No! And then put them in wash. Don't put them in wash straight away. Wash them in sink or under sh- in shower. Go to, go to the swimming pool area. They will bound to have some sort of, sort of plasticky bags that you can take and pop your swimming trunks in and just tie your underwear up in that, put it somewhere where it's not going to stink too much and then deal with them when you get home. We had to do it in Turkey. What happened? Oh, first time I properly went on holiday, weren't it? It was about 11. Who were you with? My mum and dad, our right. doms and brats. Where, where was Ryan? Just joined army. Right. <laughs> what happened? Well, I got in bed. Oh, I thought, already hate this story. Thought it was a trump, and put it this way: in the pillow. <laughs> You're so disgusting. I'm bad as them now. You can join high class. I don't want to join. I don't. But yeah, we've all been there. But then I just remember my mum shower because they were new undies so next I met that but on if they were from next. even if they were MS underwear I actually in, the more <laughs> I think funny. the more I think about it bin them do you know what mm, I've got some cos ones that were there I'd, they're the only ones and maybe my CKs I'd put under shower <gasps> then no. put them in wash on a boil wash I'd put them on a boil wash boil wash you went a whole new washing machine what do you mean? Oh. And I'd put extra fabric soft. Why fabric soft? How have we got into this? Detergent. This is why we never bloody win awards, because we talk about shit. Literally, we talk shit. And if you've got a question or a story that isn't a dilemma, problem, or anything related to feces, this is the place that we can help read it out. So drop into our DMs on social media or send us an email to help at sextedmyboss.com with anything you want to share with us. We also love hearing back from the people we offer advice to, so if that's you, get in touch with producer Ben. We will see you next week. Sorry for all the poo chat. Bye.